Uh, hello, welcome to the Biotech Stock Analysts. Um, I am going to do a quick video, a relatively quick video on ARDX, um, Artelix. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, I've done a number of different videos on it, probably four or five videos on ARDX. I've been holding this and building a position in it since last July when it was uh, a dollar, around a dollar. I think that's when I first started buying into it. Um, and you can see some interesting developments. So last Friday, um, their average volume is 7.4 million, and that's been updated because they, they added this in. It was six last week. Last Friday, they did 53 million shares um, transferred uh, hands. So massive, massive spike in volume, also a massive spike in price. So went up by um, the previous close on Thursday was $2.89, and then now it's at $3.82. Um, it actually got a little bit higher through the course of the day. Uh, it had gotten up around 390, I think. Um, so you can see, a, 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 excuse me, a 30% increase in the price. If you go back and look at some of my older videos, I've been calling this for a long time. I've said ARDX is going to be popping. Um, I think this is just the start. It's not even, um, it's not even close to where it can go. So I'm going to do a quick video. If you want to see the whole story, go back to my other videos and you'll see it. But this is the corporate presentation they gave for their earnings release in March 2023. And I want to talk about a few things that they have. So Isbrella, they have two, two products right now, two brands. Um, they're both really the same thing, which is Tenepreneur. Isbrella is for IBS. It is approved. It's on the market. Just beat the um, earnings. Um, projection by, I mean, it was, it was something like 6,000%. It's massive in earnings, um, massive beat on the earnings projection. Um, they have uh, tremendous awareness. This is, so what is Rella is for IBS. So you would have a um, uh, number of different uh, MDs who could possibly be um, prescribing this, but you can start to see, I want to find some numbers. So these are, uh, These are the uh, different options that currently exist. There is a potential for, it's a, it's a billion dollar market that they're looking at. And I don't wanna get into the science of it. So 12 million patients with IBS, 5.2 million um, have prescriptions of some type out of those three other types. 9,000 physicians account for half of the prescription volume. So there's a massive market here um, it's a billion dollar market and they have just beat their projection. Here we go. Here's our start. So 60% is Brella user base. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Um, 91% say it's substantial or moderate advance over current, uh, IBS treatments. Um, 50% of the GIs, uh, report high satisfaction. And they did, a. Uh, since their launch, our launch was last year. So it's been 12 months on December 31st, they did 15.6 million in net sales. Um, and that's just, that's, that's really, so that's ba basically three quarters, um, just getting launched. So they're just launching. Um, this is where it comes into. So, so the, the jump in price from 289 per share up to basically about a buck, they had 382 per share on in one day, that's more than 30%. Um, that's just the start of it. So Exposa was a product, and this is why I started looking at this back in June and July and started buying into it. So Exposa was rejected initially by the FDA. Exposa is the same thing. It's tenopinor. It's the same molecule, um, but it's for a different use. It's for uh, uh, CKD, so chronic kidney disease. This is basically people who are on dialysis, um, advancing late stage uh, it's the product here, but it, late stage CKD, these are people who, you know, they're going in probably weekly or more often to get dialysis. They have to be very careful with their phosphate levels. Um, so the, the purpose of tenopinor is to lower phosphate and it's different from the current. So you can see a first in class phosphate absor absorption inhibitor for the treatment of hyperphosphatemia. Um, they had an FDA review. They got a rejection. They did a, a they really fought for it. They got nephrologists behind them and they got an ADCOM. ADCOM was in November. ADCOM came back two different votes um, for a, a combo therapy, which means it would be 
approved for use with phosphate binders, and then for a monotherapy where tenopinor would be approved without phosphate binders. I think it was 10, 10, 3, I might be wrong on this, 10, 3, 9, 4. So they, they, they showed um, a fairly significant, uh, the, the vote was in, was in Exposa's favor in both cases. So 50, five, 550,000 patients are on dialysis. For the most part, those are all patients who are going to need some kind of treatment to manage phosphate. Phosphate management is, and if you go to YouTube, you, you can find um, the actual, the, the at advisory committee, the recording. I listened to it. Um, it was really clear. The, the, the clinicians on the call were very excited about Exposa and what it's able to do. Um, 1,200 patients in phase three, phys uh, uh, phase three pivotal trials. Um, 80% of the 550,000 have some kind of phosphate lowering therapy and 77% of those are unable to maintain uh, their phosphate levels. So this is in 72% of physicians report a high need for new treatment treatments. So you've got a new treatment. It's completely different from the existing treatment. Um, uh, more than 400,000 people who need this. And 77%, so, so three out of four, more than three out of four of those patients are saying, or are, are not reaching the level that they need to reach. So they're potential patients. And 72% of the physicians, so three out of four physicians who treat this want something else. So this is a, this is a true significant unmet need. Um, we'll get into that. These are the studies. Um, 8,000 nephrologists in the U.S. accounting for 80% of phosphorating lowering, lowering therapy prescriptions. So it's a relatively low market to market to. And they got the appeal um, in last year. And what we're looking at is early Q2. So this is what came out the other day. Early Q2, they are going to um, submit the new NDA. So they have to do a resubmission. Um, they're looking at a two month or a six month review. So they'll submit, let's say they submit in early April sometime. That means April, May, June, they'll get a response back from the FDA um, and they'll be told two to six months. So if it's um, uh, May, June, it could be July, August. Uh, we could be looking at September or we could be looking at the second half later back into you know uh, November, December, getting an approval, at which point they ramp up and they sell. Um, they start selling this drug. So they have a lot of partners. Um, they have all kinds of partnerships. They have Isbrella uh, in Japan. They have all, uh, they're, they're really ramping up what can be done with these things. This is their current cash. So 123.9 million cash investments, 15.6 million net product sales for Isbrella, um, some debt and 206 million uh, shares outstanding. Because they have plenty of cash to get them um, through to the end of this year. Last year, when they were down around dollar, they they had they had almost no money, so they were they were almost broke. They had a rejected. Um, uh, they had that that uh, Exposa had been rejected, so they're trying to get that back. It's been a massive turnaround, We've gone from a dollar. Um, now we're we're getting up to four dollars. Um, I've done more than 300% return on this, um, but I'm still holding. I don't plan to leave it. So that's the numbers. So I want to think, I want to just a quick number on, because one of the questions that came out, uh, a lot of people, the last on Friday was, well, are, the, are we going to see a pullback? I think you will see a pullback from the three. So let's look back at this. So this is where they're at, 382. They were 289 before that. Will we see a pullback? Probably. Um, they also have an offering, a shelf offering, so they can start running that ATM and start to dilute if they have to, but they have a lot of cash on hand. They don't need to. Um, it could be something that they wait. Once they get that exposure submission, that'll be the next catalyst. I think you're going to see, I, I don't know what to see, but I, I know I'm looking at this over the next 12 to 24 months, not as a short-term swing type of trade. I think you're looking at at least let's do some basic math. Let's say it's, it's um, I mean, I know it's more than this, but let's say it's uh, 0.8 times 55. Just do some real quick cat math. That's 440,000. I'm going to look at what's my peak. 
Okay, so 440,000, and it's going to be more than this, but 440 million per month. They're not going to get that, uh, or it's going to take a long time to reach that kind of peak. But I think that easily this is a this is a billion dollar. It's a blockbuster drug exposa. So let's say let's say they're going to they get up to peak, um, and I'm using conservative numbers. A peak of one billion, which is a thousand millions, and they don't do a dilution a dilute. That's five dollars per share. One billion per year, two two hundred million at five dollars per share, and a multiple of five. That's a twenty five dollar stock, right there. Now they'll dilute when they get to Exposa because they're gonna they're gonna need some money to commercialize. Um, how much do they need? I mean, they're gonna be break even by the end of the year, so probably not a lot. But let's just say that five at twenty. This is a twenty dollar stock. You're, you're looking, and Exposa has already gone through a rejection and appeal, so it's not gonna have the same, it has risk, but it doesn't have the same level of risk um, as the first time submission would, because they've already they've already gotten a rejection and, and nephrologists, the, the industry came back at the FDA and, and pushed. Um, so I think right now, I'm not counting as Brella, I'm counting one product, Exposa. Right now, I think in two years, I think maybe it takes three years to get, get to the billion, but the billion isn't necessarily a peak or the entire market. I'm using conservative numbers. I think this is a $20 stock in three years. Um, next year, I think we're looking at a $10 stock. So this is this is going to get to 10. It just jumped from three to almost four, a little under three to a little under four. And that was in one day. Um, maybe a little bit of a pullback, but once Exposa is submitted, the, the numbers are going to look even better. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we, we're going to see $20, $20. This is, this is going to get to um, at least within the next 36 months, maybe 24. Uh, to minimum 10 up to 20, uh, which means right now, you, you know, there's, there's just so much opportunity with this. And it's such a, the numbers all look good. The competition is so low. The, the replacement is there. This is a great stock. Uh, ARDX, I'm, I'm pretty heavy into it. Um, I'm going to get probably a, a very significant portion of my portfolio is going to be this for the next two years, but it's it's going to do a lot of numbers and the safety, um, the safety is really I think there's a lot there. Anyways, it's not investing advice, but I think I'm going to do a lot. See what you do. It's up to you. Anyways, thanks. That's a biotech investor. Um, have a good one.